The Richie Allen Show, live on Talk Radio Europe, Fab Radio International and DavidIke.com. And now, live from Manchester, England, here is Richie Allen. Check out abledanger.net. I spoke about Field at the top of the programme. A vastly, vastly experienced naval and commercial aviator. Terrific guy. Uh, brought some in- incredibly important information to us on this programme in the last few months. Let's welcome him back to the show. Field McConnell, you're very welcome. Welcome back. Well, it's uh, very gracious of you to ask me back. And it's my distinct pleasure. I believe it's my obligation to be here. So how may I... Uh be useful to you today, Richie. Well, I was really interested coming across online last night and today that you've been writing about the, I suppose it has to be called the biggest of its kind, the the biggest military exercise ever conducted on US soil by the US military known as Jade Helm, which has got the alternative news arena um, doing cartwheels. There's that much interest in it, um, Field. For our listeners who maybe I've heard the term Jade Helm and really don't understand what it is. Do you want to enlighten them on what's actually proposed to happen and what really is going to happen? Well, I, my guess is they're going to cancel the whole idea. Uh, they're getting nothing but negative publicity. And uh, what I'm going to characterize a lot of the architects of this exercise, Jade Helm, as cowards. And what cowards don't like is their exposure, and they don't like to be exposed in groups with email addresses, telephone numbers, uh, the address of their office. Uh, And we, as Able Danger, uh, have been engaged in this mode previously. About a year ago, a rancher named Bundy, I believe it was, out in Nevada. Cliven Bundy, yeah, we've had him on the show. Oh, great. about a year ago, whenever that was, when Bundy was having his trouble, um, I sent an email to the Bureau of Land Management offices in Nevada, and in that email was the phone number and email address of every employee of the United States Bureau of Land Management in the state of Nevada. And I'm not making this up. Uh, hopefully, somebody in my own chat room can Google it and. Uh, find it, but I set a deadline of sundown, and I think on that evening, sundown out there was sometime around 7.30 or 7.21 p.m., Uh, I said, if you don't get U.S. troops, U.S., uh, and I said troops, and it's the same difference, Uh, these are like, I don't want to compare them to anything else. I'll stay on topic. The uh, federal agents at the Bureau of Land Management were told that if they didn't get their boots off of Bundy's land by sundown on Saturday night, that I would publish the home address of every Bureau of Land Management person in the state of Nevada. And I'm very happy, pleased, and honestly, Richie, I was somewhat surprised, but about 5 p.m. on Saturday, uh, they got off of the property, and who knows what motivated them to cave in at that time, but I would say that cowardice is commonplace in the United States federal government. And frankly, uh, I think you're from Ireland, but I know you live in England, but I think the U.K. Uh, government has a whole lot of cowards in it uh, from top to bottom, and that's why I'm going to Nottingham I'm leaving here tomorrow night. I'll be in Nottingham Thursday evening. Brilliant. We'll talk about that shortly, your trip to, uh, to, to England. But there's so much to get through in the 22, 23 minutes that we have. Um, for our listeners who may be uh, just coming in on this, Jade Helm is, um, and I'm reading from the Washington Post now, from Dan Lemos. This is a couple of weeks ago. It's a vast mission geographically and strategically. Elite, elite service members from four branches of the U.S. military will launch an operation this summer in which they will operate covertly among the U.S. public and travel from state to state in military aircraft. Texas, Utah and a section of Southern California are labelled as hostile territory and New Mexico isn't much friendlier. That's the scheme for Jade Helm 15, a special operations exercise that runs from July 15th to September the 15th. 
Um, they're saying it's just an exercise. It's all about protecting the homeland and all of that. Um, but a lot of people think differently. Before we talk about what it means, Phil, and why they would dream up things like that, um, aren't you lucky in light of the threat? And I'm not being sarcastic now because I believe you. Uh, and, and anything you've said to me before, you've proven it to me with documentation. But for you to make a threat like that, to release the names and addresses of those people, you're lucky you didn't get arrested for that. Okay, I'm having difficulty probably because of my cell phone, but I'd love to answer your question. I just didn't hear it well enough to come up with an answer. But if, if you can shorten the question and speak a little bit slower, I hope I can give you a good answer. So go ahead. Yeah, in, in looking back to the Clive and Bundy ranch situation, you said that you threatened to release the names and addresses of, um, of, of those people, of those authorities. Why didn't they arrest you for that? I mean, that's a pretty serious threat. Well, I understand your question, and, you know, I, I hope you're as uh, humored by this situation as I am. You and I are speaking the same language, but because I sound like a Norwegian from North Dakota, <laughs> and you sound uh, like a fluent English speaker near Manchester or Birmingham, it would, it's difficult for some people to understand each other, but I have 100% of what you just asked me. Why did the federal government not arrest me? That's an excellent question. Um, why did not Judge Rosemary M. Collier take me into custody as a uh, domestic terrorist when I was in her courtroom on the 19th of January in Washington, D.C.? The year was 2001. The answer, I think, and I'm, I'm trying to be humble and honest, which I find very easy because I am humble and honest. Uh, the honesty part does not scare the U.S. federal government. They simply are such useless tools that they think that I have to be working for a very, very large agency to be able to deliver so much accurate information in such a timely manner uh, with such precision that because they're a bunch of inept boobs, they think I must be working for something the size of, uh, say, the uh, DNI. I wonder who they are, the Department of National Intelligence. If you Google my name and Global Operations Director, uh, it's alleged by the Internet that I am the Global Operations Director of three or four different agencies, and uh, I'll be real frank with you and the worldwide audience because it's way past time to do this. Global Operations Director, G-O-D, if you capitalize the first letter, it spells God. And I want to embrace all Muslims, agnostics, Hindus, Buddhists, Satanists, uh, atheists, Christians, and every other uh, population of faith out there saying that it is God himself who has not only kept me alive from a physical health standpoint, uh, but also I haven't been taken into custody as a domestic terrorist. And Richie, I think you're playing a part of my protection and insurance right now. They wonder, uh, they being the United States federal government, they wonder why they haven't been able to stop this flow of information uh, and now the, uh, we have the balance of power on our side because let's say I slipped on a banana peel tonight in my shower and I bumped my head. That wouldn't slow down this message. I delivered my message about Jade Helm yesterday in a recording. I delivered uh, some viewpoints about the legitimacy of monarchs. It's recorded. It's out there in history. And I'm just about, in fact, I'll send you an email uh, today when I send my letter, Richie. I believe I'll get it done tonight. I'm putting uh, a bunch of people on notice that my own sister, Christine Marcy, who is more powerful than Hillary Clinton, appears not to be able to stop me either. And I'm going to be filing five charges against her legally. Uh, four of them are grand theft of money. Uh, she's done that four times within a trust set up by my parents. 
My parents were patriots. Now, my Field, parents, let me just let me yeah. just jump in there because we did we did get into this um, the, okay. the the next to last time you were with us, and she's not here to defend herself. Um, so what I want to do, not not that I doubt you for a minute, what I want to do because our time is short. I love having you on. Um, is I want to just uh, jump uh, to talk a little bit more about Jade Helm, and then I want to talk about the Germans knowing about MH. No, sorry, knowing that it was dangerous to fly over eastern Ukraine, but the Germans didn't tell Lufthansa authorities. But a little bit about Jade Helm Field. Do you think that what they're really doing is practicing to bring about martial law right across the country? whenever they feel that it is time to do that. Is that what Jade Helm is really all about? Yes, it is. But I know, well, let me say I think. It's my opinion, and I am literally betting my life, aren't I? It's my opinion that they're bluffing. These guys are cowards. Uh, when I say these guys, who are they? Uh, Barry Swatero, Punahou 60, excuse me, Punahou 79, some people know him as Barack Obama. He's a coward. Uh, Hillary Clinton, she's a coward. Let me slip my sister's name in there because I want your audience to Google my sister. Her name is Christine, K-R-I-S-T-I-N-E, Marcy, M-A-R-C-Y. She and her ilk, I-L-K, are all cowards, and they're all afraid of we the people, not we the Christian patriot gun owners, we, the global commoners, uh, they know, they know because I've told them, that the entire United States military could not come in and put Wisconsin, one single state of the 50. Uh, it's me speaking clearly here, Field McConnell, F-I-E-L-D, and my social security number is 583 uh, the federal government cannot control the United States military, and uh, the enlisted men in the United States military, and I believe in our allied militaries as well, the enlisted men have recently come to understand that they are little tin soldiers paid for by the city of London, the Vatican, the corporation of the United States of America through the corporation of the District of Columbia. And I just found out about five days ago, Richie, that you are living in a corporation too, the corporation That's of right. the United Kingdom. That's right. Well, they keep... are you afraid of them? I'm not afraid of them. No, I mean, uh, realizing what they are and what they're capable of is a sobering thing. Um, but I wouldn't say I'm afraid of them, no, because I think uh, owing to men uh, and women like you, and others, um, I think they're on the run now, Field. I think their game is over anyway, whether they like to admit it or not. But let me just ask you this, and uh, lots and lots of um, comments coming in for you on Twitter. We have a, a very serious situation in Baltimore at the moment. We know that a young black man was murdered by the police. His spine was severed. Um, the man, of course, was Freddie Gray. Field, my um, friend and supporter, David Icke, has said for years and years and years, everything is connected. So we hear about Jade Helm and military exercises. And at the same time, we have riots in Baltimore because a young man was murdered. Now, I believe that most black people in Baltimore probably don't know who these rioters are. I reckon many of them are shipped in from out of town to cause chaos. Do you think the situation in Baltimore is related to Jade Helm and the idea of Jade Helm? What do you think? I think they're testing the waters locally. Uh, who are they? Let's be really specific. Uh, I'm 65 years old, and I'm a Christian Marine who's engaged in intelligence work. They collectively are a bunch of cowards that are bought and paid for by... Uh, elements of the crown agents in the city of London, the Vatican, perhaps the monarchy. I'm not sure. I'll learn a lot more in the next 72 hours, and I'm speaking about the UK monarchy. Uh, and I'm not being critical of the idea of the mar monarchy. I'm being focused on the breach of the monarchy vow. Uh, that vow was to God, the commoners, and 
the nation. But as far as Baltimore goes, uh, people like Mayor Bloomberg of New York and Barry Swatero of Indonesia, Kenya, British Columbia, uh, Pakistan, anywhere but the United States of America, my sister Christine Marcy gave Barry Swatero his U.S. passport in 1994. Now, they're both going to be facing charges from me over that issue alone. But going back to Baltimore, this is the uh, third or fourth time we've seen the same act by the same group of losers. Uh, Ferguson, Missouri, they could not get black and white people to hate each other because black people, half white people, half black people, white people, red people, yellow people, the people of the world see the hand of Satan and you can place the hand of Satan in Ferguson. You can place it in Baltimore. You can you can place it uh, in the skies over the Ukraine uh, on the 17th of July of last year. Uh, the hand of Satan is uh, being exposed, and the hand of God is being revealed. And once again, I'm not up on a I'm I'm a sinner just like everybody else. And if there's any people out there that don't know you're a sinner. Well, then you're an ignorant sinner. Uh, but I am a sinner, and I'm not proud of that, but I'm a weak human. But I'll tell you one thing. I'm strong enough to stand up for God, stand up for the United States of America, and stand up for the United Kingdom. And if somebody wants me to not stand up, they simply have to knock me down. Richie, over to you. Brilliant, Fields. Now, today the German media released... Um, Kind of astonishing news, or, or, or broadcast astonishing news to me. We learned that um, days or even a couple of weeks before MH17 was shot down on July 17th last year, that the Germans had intelligence, basically, that planes flying in that airspace were, you know, possibly susceptible to artillery and, and might be in danger. Now, Phil, you'll have learned this today yourself. I know you're a few hours behind me. I'm an ordinary bloke, an ordinary man. You are one of the most experienced aviators I've ever come across anyway. How in the name of Jesus, and I'm not blaspheming now, how can people keep their jobs? The only conclusion I can draw is that somebody wanted a plane to be shot down in that region. How could the German intelligence agencies not tell Lufthansa authorities or or, 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 or management or whatever, listen, you got to take different routes. You can't fly over that part of Ukraine. Feel what's going on? These are staggering revelations today. Well, nobody's enforcing the laws and nobody's enforcing the regulations and nobody is... Uh recognizing true power, and once again, my ears and your accent have caused me to get only about 93% of it, but I think you did say, and I'm quoting you, and, and I'm not criticizing you, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pat you on the back, but did you not just invoke the name of Jesus? I did. Well, that's what they're all afraid of. That's what my sister's afraid of. That's what Obama's afraid of. That's what the Chief Justice John Roberts is afraid of. I think to some degree, Merkel and I can't pronounce Hollande's name, but the guy in charge of France, I think they're afraid of the truth getting out. But you know what, Richie, and here comes a gigantic compliment for you. The two greatest interviews I've ever participated in, one was with you oh, within the last month or so, and one was with 21st Century Wire, and the reason why those interviews, uh, to use a UK term, the reason why those interviews are so brilliant is because of the clarity of purpose and the fluency of the subject matter by you and one of your competitors, so I, I won't say his name, but his initials are PJH. Well, you can, you uh, can mention him if you want. We're all in this oh, no, together. I, no, I know we're all in this together, and that's exactly what I told the people in Germany. Uh, I'm going to give you a bit of history. On the 20th of December of 1943, a Major Franz Stigler, F-R-A-N-Z Stigler, of the Luftwaffe, allowed uh, 10 Americans to land safely uh, in the United Kingdom after he was given a direct order to shoot down a wounded airplane. Uh, I'm going to correct myself before anybody in the chat room can correct me. 
the I what I said specifically is true. Ten Americans landed safely. One of the Americans, the tail gunner, was dead. Uh, the United States of America owes a great debt to Germany uh, for allowing nine Americans to survive and for allowing the dead American to uh, be dealt with on his own soil. Uh, I went over to Germany for two reasons, but the biggest reason I went is because Andreas Lubitz has been libeled by every mainstream media in the United, in the United States, the United Kingdom, and indeed the world. And I went over there to stand up for a 27-year-old German kid I'll never meet. But uh, you, I'm glad you invoked the name of Jesus because it's Jesus Christ and him alone that can defeat these evil bastards. Over to you, Richie. Yeah, I can't argue with any of that. I, I, I wonder how the German government can... I mean, the German uh, German people are... Uh, no more or no less intelligent than anybody else. But surely they're asking questions today. Why didn't you share your intelligence with Lufthansa and the other uh, airlines in the, you know, within the European Union? Field, we can only conclude somebody wanted a plane to be shot down uh, over eastern Ukraine so that they could blame Russian separatists. That's how we have to read this. What do you think? I agree with you, but more importantly, uh, I want to tell you there's a very uh, learned, L-E-A-R-N-E-D, a a very learned interviewer. uh, When I was in Heidelberg, I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly, I was invited over to Germany by a man named Axel Koenig, and uh, he introduced me to Ralph T. Niemeyer, And he and I agreed, uh, in both cases, I believe, that uh, somebody, and I think it's the same people, by the way, and I'll name them later. I'm not afraid to name people, and I'm not afraid if I'm wrong. Um, In the case of who may have wanted to have a major incident in, uh, I said Malaysia, I meant to say Ukraine on the 17th of July, uh, what they had was a huge problem. Who are they? They're the evil bastards I alluded to earlier. When they took Malaysia 370, uh, they couldn't make an issue of it because some private intelligence agency uh, published the truth before the liars even had their next meal. Um, But that gave them a huge problem, they, the liars, and the cowards. And there are not that many of them, really. Most people are just in over their head and they're getting paid a lot to act stupid. But having said that, the people that did Malaysia 370 had a huge problem. They had to get rid of 239 corpses, and they had to get rid of an airframe. Uh, and I don't want you to think I'm any smarter or part of anything bigger than what I am. Um, I'm, I'm simply called to do this, and I'm fairly good at it, I guess. Well, what they did was they, and I knew they would do this, I, I anticipated they would dump a uh, used airplane out on the west coast of Australia, but I also uh, told that I told Malaysia in writing, and it's all over the internet. Uh, you can find it, or I can send it to you. Uh, on the 29th of, 29th of March last year, I told Malaysian Airlines and the Malaysian government, if you don't expose the Boeing uninterruptible autopilot and ATI, you can expect. I'm going to slow down and get this real clear. You can expect to have a second explosive event no later than 7 p.m. on the 17th of July of 2014. That second event was Malaysia uh, 17, and it got rid of the 239 corpses. Uh, It also got rid of the aircraft that had been sitting in Diego Garcia for a number of months. Now, I put that in writing, so I'm not sitting here as Johnny come lately making up ad lib responses to your question. But let's go uh, from who did Malaysia. Well, somebody wanted to start a a hot war. Uh, Who would that somebody be? Well, it's whoever's running the United States of America. That's who. And you can, we can all argue about who is controlling the United States of America. But all we do by argue is get ourselves tired and we get no closer to the truth. So let me tell you who I think uh, was, and this is just me personally, Field McConnell, 
65-year-old sinner uh, who was behind the shoot-down of German Wings 95-25. I've said it in print. I've said it on live radio. I'll say it again. I think it was Obama and a guy named Dieter Uchtdorf, uh, U-C-H-T-D-O-R-F. Is that clear enough, Richie? Yeah, and we last time you were on, we... Um, we got into that. It's um, amazing, um, but vital information field. It's 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 why we're here. Uh, just before we go, and I'm glad that the mobile phone, your cell phone, is held up. And uh, next time you're on, we'll have much more time as well, and, and hopefully we'll be able to do it on the Skype. But before we go, a uh, number of people listening to the program have contacted me to get details of your Nottingham visit. Why are you coming to Nottingham? And when will you be here? Well, I should arrive in Nottingham at 7 p.m. on uh, Thursday night of this week. And I say, well, I'll say very clearly, the only reason I don't arrive, there's two choices. Uh, Either U.S. or U.K. people stop me at the departure point or the arrival point, or I'm dead. And you know what? That's the beauty of this. Because if they stop me officially, the United States or the United Kingdom, they lose. Because everybody in Nottingham is suddenly going to be my cheerleading section. So I'm going to get to Nottingham. I should arrive at 7 p.m. I'll be working closely with the U.K. column, which I'm sure you're aware of. We are. But, but my, my real relationship to Nottingham is simply I was asked to come over. I'm willing to go over there and tell the truth to as many people who have the time that want to listen and uh, let me ask you this question: Are you going to be there, Richie, by any chance? Well, I'm, I'm, I'm. Well, I'm not a couple of hundred miles, but I'm about 120, 130 miles away. It's going to be difficult, okay. field. It's going to be difficult for me to to meet you this time around, which is a a real shame. But I'll be with you in spirit, and um, I mean, I'm sure we'll will our, our paths will cross eventually anyway. Do you want to email me or get somebody uh, in the chat room to tweet me uh, the venues? in Nottingham and the venues in London. I think you're going to be in London as well. Is that right? Or is, or is it just Nottingham? No, I'll, I'll be passing through Heathrow's terminal number four at 12.15 on Thursday. Uh, I will be doing an interview somewhere in Uxbridge uh, relating to Boris Johnson's uh, feeble approach to be a MP. And then I'll be traveling uh, via the motorway, as you guys say it. I'll be traveling right up to uh, Nottingham and I will be working elbow to elbow with three groups, uh, UK Column, Get Out of Debt Free, and We the People. When I say We the People, I'm talking about every single person I meet yes. or touch. And, and we're all in this together, and we're going to win this thing, Richie. Field, you're a, an absolute gentleman. Have a terrific trip to the UK. We will tweet out um, what you're doing in Nottingham and where people can go and see you. In the meantime, people, go to abledanger.net. That's A-B-E-L, danger.net. Field, Godspeed to you. Thanks for coming on and look after yourself. It's my pleasure and it's my mandate and I appreciate your time a great deal, Richie. You're a wonderful interviewer and I'll say goodbye now. Thanks, Field. Bye for now. Field McConnell on the line to us there. He's going to set off for uh, the UK in uh, about 36 hours from now. I will get from um, Field's um, colleagues the actual uh, details of what he's going to be doing in Nottingham and I will put it on Twitter and on my Facebook page. This is, this, is, this is the public perception which needs to change. And I, I completely understand why this, um, this perception is held by people. Um, they judge the number of children that go missing by the number of missing children stories on the mainstream news, in the mainstream media. So Madeleine McCann uh, uh, is a big story, yeah. But Madeleine McCann is the tip of the tip of the tip of the tip of the tip, and I could go on for hours, of the iceberg. But as long as we allow the psychopaths who run the world to have an infinite supply of money, they will continue to supply us with an infinite dose of absolute nutcase totally servile, disgusting, amoral son of a bitches who will support whatever script and agenda they put in front of them. And that's what we have. With vaccines, vaccinations, 
and the whole controversy about vaccinations in the alternative media. Before I do that, I want to play you a clip. This is Tony Abbott. If you don't know who he is, don't worry about it. Uh, he's a, a politician. He happens to be the Prime Minister of Australia. And recently, in fact, only a couple of days ago, he... ...alanshow.com forward slash donate. And you can use PayPal or there are bank account details there if you want to use those. But please do consider helping to keep the program on the air. It's a terrifically um, successful program. I can say that without any ego uh, to this point. It's getting an enormous audience and it's going out on more and more and more networks. In fact, we're adding networks all the time. So I need your help to keep it going. At the moment, no sponsorship, entirely listener funded. Go to richieallenshow.com forward slash donate and um, make a contribution if you can. Thank you for doing it.